I can't emphasize enough how important it is to record all the results and keep the brochures that the agents give you when you attend an open for inspection or you can simply just print them off the internet. That way you can record photos of the houses and keep notes on each individual house. So if something else comes up in the street or in the area, you've got a reference point not only on the photos of the house, but the floor plan and a lot of other minor details that you otherwise wouldn't have thought of. It's just a great way to jog the memory. What I do is keep them all in a folder. So I'll go through a quick example of one that I went through recently. These are actually, I'll just do a side-by-side -side comparison of two houses that sold in my street. So this first one here, number 26, that's obviously on one side of the street, and this one, number 19. The amazing thing was what they were both built in the same era. So if we'll zoom in here, you'll see that the floor plans are exactly the same, except one house has a garage and the other one has an extended dining room. Both these houses went up for auction on the same day, one at 10.30 and one at 11. The first auction that was at 10.30 was the house that was advertised at $380,000 plus, so the vendor would have been happy with four hundred and twenty dollars as a reserve. As it was a rising market, it actually sold for an amazing $505,000, which is fine because that's what the market's demanding. So it was ethical by the real estate agent to advertise at three hundred and eighty dollars because the vendor was actually quite happy to accept four hundred and twenty. dollars got spoken to them prior. The fact that it got a lot more is just was a sign of what the market was doing. So as an area specialist, you can start to recognise these things. What became interesting then though, was the next house which was auctioned only half an hour later. That one was the one with a little extension at the back, but to me was in a lot worse condition. And that reflected in the price, which was $350,000 plus. So the vendor was actually expected to receive about 30000 less. As it turns out though, this house also sold for 505000 This goes to show the psychology of buyers potentially, whereas it hit that mark and they knew that it was probably no better than the other house, so they weren't prepared to, prepared to bid any higher. So just all these little tips to look for, the psychology behind the buying, what they're going for, if it's a lot above the reserve, and like I said, keep the brochures, because these two now, I've got the floor plans as well as a few photos, so if something else came up in the area with the exact same floor plan, I'd expect maybe to pay 505000 depending on the condition of the house. I've also included on the First Home Buyers Help CD-ROM an Excel spreadsheet for you to record all these prices and make a few comments on the houses. That way it's all in one place and it's nice and easy to reflect later on. Moving on now from the area specialist to the advertising and the type of advertising that's used. I just want you to be aware of a few terms that are quite commonly used in the real estate world. Land size. When they describe land size in an ad, it may be a low maintenance block or developers delight. By looking at the language you can see the type of buyer that the real estate agent's after. For example, if you see a property that's a developer's delight, you probably don't want to go near it because it's going to go for too high a price or potentially the house is extremely run down and you're to, going to have to put a lot of money into it. Another thing that a house often tries to sell on is location, 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 which may mean that it's near a shopping centre, trains, parks, nice walking tracks. But the thing is with location is, it doesn't matter if you buy that particular house or one 300 metres away, because they're really in the same location. So I wouldn't necessarily buy into that location is the be all and end all, because at the end of the day, you're not going to be all that much further away from the exact same things if you buy another house, whether that house is twice half the size of the one for sale. Another term used for a rundown house is original condition. So if the kitchen is in original condition, it probably means that it's about 60 years old and has to go. Another thing that advertising will often try and sell on is a north facing block or a north facing backyard these days because that's where most people tend to live. The reason for that is having the afternoon sun so it will keep certain rooms of the house warmer when you're living in them. So it's a desirable direction for the house to be facing. I'll tell you a funny story though about a north facing block. A couple of friends of mine from the Victorian Investing Network went on a road trip to look at a few properties and they found an advertisement for a north facing lounge. But when they went to actually view this property, this north facing lounge was just a huge brick wall with no windows. So the very purpose of the 
having the nice afternoon sunlight's defeated when all the sun's doing is hitting the brick wall. So just be careful of things that don't always appear as they seem. Like in the first home buyer's help manual, where I go through that example of that really cheap house I had a look at, only to rock up and find that there was a huge power line in the backyard, which is why it was a $100,000 discount. Not many people would probably want to live under the power lines with the fear of cancer, so it's a really limited market that they had.